<laughs> a bucket and some bleach. That's all it takes. Well, my wife and I were looking to adopt one and then two boys named Michael and Habakkuk from Liberia, West Africa. And in 2009, as we were hoping to adopt those boys, we, we heard that Liberia had closed to adoption. And we thought, well, that'll just be a short time. But uh, then we heard that Habakkuk, the younger of the two, about two and a half years old, that he, was, uh, he had malaria. And then he, I heard he had started to get better. But then weakened by malaria, uh, he died of dirty drinking water through something called cholera, and he died on June 30th, 2009. And, and Peggy felt like that can't be the end of the story. And so uh, we had a memorial service in our backyard, and Peggy, it was just like, that can't be the end of the story. Death isn't the final word. And so she led the way on uh, raising the $7,000 it was going to take to put in a, a new clean water well uh, in his village called Peleteyama. And so the well went in before the rainy season the next year, and, uh, and we watched the slideshow on it, and, and she said, uh, yeah, I should have been there. Next time I'm going to be there. And in October 2010, she went, and she took her trip, and she came back, and she said, uh, you know, they need money for a school. They, they can't read the inscription at the well. They need a school. And so March of 2011, we both went to Liberia. During that trip, we went to Pelatiyama, but we also went to several other villages. And we saw village after village after village with no clean drinking water. And when we asked the people there, what is your highest need? They said, we, we need clean water. Our children are dying. And so we realized that what was happening in Pelatiyama, what had happened to our little boy, was not an isolated situation at all, but was happening throughout the entire country, where the leading cause of death is um, from waterborne illnesses and malaria. And so on that trip, Mark and I and our friend in Liberia, Pastor Peter Flomo, started an organization called Teamwork Africa. Teamwork Africa's goal is to work through churches in Liberia to meet physical, spiritual, and social needs of their community. And we want to see the people in Liberia seeing God meet their needs through their local churches. And so together um, with Peter, we have 15 pastors that work with us throughout the central area of Liberia to bring clean water, um, to bring education and medical care. Um, we do microfinance program and child sponsorship. We're trying to reach as many people as we can through the local churches because we believe that the people in Liberia, the leaders there, know the right thing to do. They just lack the resources to be able to do it. So with partnership with our friends here in the U.S., we're trying to help our friends in Liberia to meet the needs of their people. We're brothers in the war-torn land Left without a mother or father And way too young to understand then a family learned of their story A family from America They filed the paperwork for adopting These two boys from Liberia But the adoption moved too slowly Back and became ill while battling with malaria. He would soon grow weaker still from contaminated water. Collar claimed a boy, and there would be no happy ending, no family filled. So this family sought an answer 
So no more children would die from contaminated waters and their father heard their cry from the lack of cool clean water to many families in mourning the loss of sons and daughters and teamwork Africa was born there was a way to get cool clean water from down in the ground to stop the dying of the little children in every village and town if the seed is planted So now in village after village, hope has finally come from new wells of cool, clean water and living water from the sun. There is a way to get cool, clean water from down in the ground to stop the dying of the little children. Yeah, uh, Peggy and our oldest daughter Evelyn were planning to go back to Liberia in August and September to help start uh, a school called Great King Academy. Uh, and even this summer, our co-founder of Teamwork Africa, Peter Flomo, was here and he went back July 10th. But uh, as uh, late July turned into August, uh, the Ebola outbreak was worse and worse in Liberia. And uh, Peggy was on the phone with Peter one day and, and what can we do? And Peter had the idea of the buckets that they would, uh, for $15 or less, that, that we could provide five gallon buckets with a spigot and some bleach and that's where hand washing uh, could be a difference maker and it has been as some 3,000 buckets have been provided. So when, when uh, I was talking to Peter at the end of July talking about whether or not I could come in August and he said it's not safe, you can't come, school's been canceled and then we started talking about what the role of Teamwork Africa and what the role of our pastors was during a crisis like this. And that's when Peter came up with the bucket idea. And we've, we've been able to distribute all of those buckets that have gone out. And in all of those families that have gotten buckets, we've only had two cases of Ebola within those communities. But before the buckets got there, we two of our starfish children contracted Ebola and their families, and we lost both of them. And also during that time, we had two nurses that were working with our program. And one of those nurses' name is Nancy Saki, and she's one of our pastor's wives. She worked at Phoebe Hospital, and she got Ebola. And uh, she was in medical treatment, and we were just praying desperately for her survival. But she didn't make it either. She was the primary breadwinner for her family. She and her husband took care of 10 of their grandchildren, including um, also her elderly mother-in-law. Those 10 kids and her husband were in quarantine for 21 days. So the other side effect of the Ebola is the family that's left behind in quarantine. And without the support of their neighbors and families, they have no food or no water, no medicine for 21 days. So besides giving them buckets, we've also started providing food and medical support for those families in quarantine. And again, it's about $15 per person for those 21 days. And we've been able to also give out dozens of families um, the medicine and food that they need during those times of quarantine. By the grace of God, George Saki and his 10 grandchildren 
did not contract Ebola from his, and his wife mother-in-law. and his mother-in-law, and they and they survived the quarantine, and and they're healthy today. Uh, but they wouldn't have been without the support of Teamwork Africa providing them food during the time of that quarantine. So. Teamwork Africa is working hard to meet the needs in Liberia. As much as we've done already, there's so much more to do. Pastor Peter in Liberia gets calls every day from communities saying, please bring buckets to us. So if you would just join with us and help provide those buckets to the people in Liberia, you really can make a difference for a family. There's 
right now estimated at 70,000 people per doctor in Monrovia. That's like all of Eau Claire and, and Altoona. Yeah. One doctor for the whole city. And so it, 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 most of the clinics are just shut down altogether because the nurses, if the administrative and administration can't guarantee that their staff are going to be safe, they just told people to stay home. And so we actually were able to work with another organization and sent a container of food and medical supplies um, to Liberia to help with our, we have two clinics that we work with, um, and they're not treating Ebola. <laughs> they're treating things like malaria, and, and uh, one of the clinics is just delivering babies, because all of those other things that people would normally go to the doctor for, they can't get any treatment, because all the clinics are closed. And so there's a lot of people who are sick and really suffering, not just because of Ebola, but because there's no medical services anywhere anymore. Um, and so this has been in the news, it's been really big here, and a lot of people are afraid of Ebola coming to our country and our communities. But if we don't stop Ebola in Liberia, it's going to spread around the world. We have to go to the source of this problem. It's something that's doable. We can contain it. We can um, solve this problem. But we have to do it, and we have to do it quickly. So thank you for being here and, and hearing about this, sharing, share with other people what we're doing. There's a lot of flyers, grab a stack of them, and just let people know that if you're scared or frustrated or wondering what you can do to make a difference, it's really simple. So you can um, send a check or donate online, and I'm happy to answer any of the questions you've got. So thanks. So much waste in our government. Bucket and some bleach. That's all it takes. Yep.